Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. We begin with breaking news out of South Fargo. A body has been found along the Red River near 52nd Avenue South or what's known as the Convent Road. Initial reports had the body found on the Moorhead side. Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley is live on scene right now and she joins us. Bailey, what do you have? Yeah, Mike, the scene is clearing out right now, but we are on the Fargo side, but it's a lot of more head officials here. We had more head fire here. We have the Clay County Sheriff still on scene here. We had the Valley Water Rescue here. Uh, again, we're clearing out here. We don't have a lot of uh, details yet. We don't know man or woman. We don't really know when the call came in, how it came in, but uh, we're supposed to be getting that official word from the Clay County Sheriff here in just a few minutes. Uh, again. It was a very active scene from about the five o'clock hour until just about five minutes ago. Again, lots of valley water rescue. The last boat you can see in your shot right now that just came out of the water. There was about five boats that were up and down the river here. And uh, again, that one just finally came out of the water here again. Mike, uh, we're waiting for official word from the Clay County Sheriff. I would like to check back in with you in a few minutes and give you those official details for now. Reporting live in Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Bailey can't help but notice that the snow continues to disappear. I'm wondering what impact those stronger winds are going to have in this process. Let's begin our weekend coverage, weather coverage on what's happening right now tonight. Hutch is in for that. Yes, Mike, thanks so much. We do have a few more clouds up in the Northern Valley, but we are seeing some or did see some sun today in the Southern Valley. That helped us warm up a little warmer than expected, but the winds are really picking up, gusting to 30 miles per hour as of the latest reading. Now for tomorrow, we're expecting even greater winds. A breezy night is in store for tonight. More on tomorrow's winds in just a few moments as we get ready to enjoy a gorgeous sunset there. As we take a look at temperatures, nearly steady upper 30s tonight. Winds gusting to around 40 miles per hour into the early overnight hours. Grand Forks, it'll be a cooler night there with temperatures in those 30s for most of the evening. Coming up, we have some flakes in the forecast for a not too spooky Halloween. I'll have the breezy details coming up in just a little bit. All right, look forward to that. Thanks, Hutch. Frustrations over an alleged unfair landlord tonight. A woman calling our whistleblower hotline saying her mother-in-law, who unexpectedly passed away in the middle of October, is being forced to pay next month's rent. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard looked into the matter, and here's what she found. Have some compassion. You can't put a date on somebody's life. Angela Oyen is talking about the Auburn Place Apartments in South Fargo owned by Orange Property Management. Her mother-in-law was living there month to month with no signed contract. We had gone through and done as much as we could to help her. Kathy was diagnosed with bone cancer on October 13th. Five days later, she passed away. The apartment company called Oyen Thursday night saying November's rent is still due because proper notification wasn't given to them. I mean, how, how do you expect somebody to pay rent or give proper notification when they die five days after being told they have cancer? We haven't heard back from the apartment complex, but Oyen says her mother-in-law had $250 to her name when she died and was living paycheck to paycheck. November's rent is completely... It, it, it's not even feasible for us. Adding the family is scrambling to come up with the $6,000 for a cremation funeral on top of other expenses. Why try to hold a family that's already, you know, struggling the way it is to pay for something that they can't even afford? I reached out to a local law firm and they say they've gotten many calls relating to apartment issues lately. They say typically when someone passes away, the lease agreement ends. Oyen saying she hasn't been able to track down this company's agreement. Property managers, they really need to, they really need to put themselves in somebody else's shoes. In Fargo, Callie Hubbard, Valley News Live. The family does say that the apartment is vacant and move in ready for the month of November. If you need help with an issue in your community, here's some advice. Call our whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. The phone number is on your screen right now, 701-237-6576. Call the number, leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. 
We're getting word through our sister station WCCO in the Twin Cities that absentee ballots must now be in by 3 p.m. on Election Day in Minnesota. We told you yesterday that a federal court ruled Minnesota cannot extend the deadline for accepting mail-in ballots after Election Day because of the pandemic. The court's saying there's no pandemic exception in the Constitution. Minnesota Secretary of State Steve Simon called the ruling unnecessarily disruptive. There will be more time later for expressions of disappointment. For now, our focus has to be very clear, and that is on the voters of Minnesota. We have to make sure that every legally cast ballot is counted. The lawsuit was brought by Minnesota State Representative Eric Lucero, who is a Republican presidential elector. He called it a significant victory for Minnesota voters, fair elections, and the rule of law. While this ruling doesn't block the state's seven-day extension period for counting absentee ballots, it does require that late ballots be segregated. Those votes may be counted if a final order finds them unlawful. The case is now in the hands of a lower court for further proceedings. A Cass County man accused of murder will no longer be uh, present, present at his trial after an outburst in court this morning that led him to be escorted out by three bailiffs. 37-year-old Christopher Riley is on trial in the death of his father, Kevin Riley Sr., in September of 2018. Riley was removed from court once already this week after cursing at the judge. Please I'm present. in the custody of Cass County Jail. If I'm you... treated like a man. I have no rights as a human being, and my jury is not even here to listen to me plead for my life. Riley later told his attorney to finish your mock trial. I'll just appeal it later. His trial is expected to wrap up late next week. A man is facing charges following an assault in Polk County. It happened Wednesday in McIntosh, Minnesota. The victim's name hasn't been released, but we're told they are out of the hospital. Eric Berg, meanwhile, was arrested for kidnapping, committing great bodily harm, and terrorizing. A Fargo woman is in the hospital following a DUI crash. This happened at 1.30 this afternoon along University Drive and 7th Avenue North. The driver has been identified as 21-year-old Racine Mousseau. She was arrested, as we said, for DUI. Having to go in the next room and tell my son that his father was killed in an accident. He immediately started crying, and the first thing he asked me is, will I be able to get a new dad? And that was, that was devastating. This is the view from inside a truck driver's cab of a deadly crash. The Minnesota Department of Public Safety is using it as a way to raise awareness of distracted driving. Sam Hicks got an alert on his phone and looked down just for eight seconds. Eight seconds at 63 miles per hour ended the life of 54-year-old Robert Bursick in February of 2018. Bursick was a professor at North Hennepin Community College and owned Dragonfly Gardens in Amory, Wisconsin. He was also a father. I think about his family. You definitely don't want to be that person that takes somebody else's life. The state patrol reminds drivers that hands-free cell phone use is the law in Minnesota, and that means drivers cannot hold their phone in their hand. Accessing or posting on social media, streaming videos, checking that box score, or Googling information on a device while driving, all against the law in Minnesota, even in hands-free mode. We're going to go back to that breaking news that we led the newscast off. We're getting more information about that body that was reportedly found in the Red River. Let's go back to Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley, who remains on the scene. Bailey, what's new? Mike, the Clay County Sheriff Mark Empting did confirm that there was a body found in the river earlier this evening. They say that they received a missing person that there was a deputy with the Clay County Sheriff's Department as well as personnel from the Valley Water Rescue in a boat going up and down the river. We're not really clear why they were doing that, what kind of information was given to them earlier today. But again, uh, they were in a boat driving up and down the river, and that's when they came across that man's body. We do not have an approximate age, but the Clay County Sheriff says at this time there does not appear to be any foul play involved. They also clarified that at this time it, it doesn't seem that this is a vulnerable adult situation who wandered off uh, at this time. Uh, 
the Clay County Sheriff says they, that's all that they're releasing uh, out of respect for the family. Obviously, our hearts uh, go out to this family who is now mourning. But those are the information that we have right now. The Clay County Sheriff says uh, more information will come either at the end of this weekend or Monday morning. For now, reporting live in South Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Hi, Bailey, thanks for that update. Later on Valley News Live at 6, details on a multi-million dollar project that's promising hundreds of new jobs in the metro. And temperatures today almost got to average for this time of the year in Fargo and Grand Forks. We'll have some mild weather to talk about, but some growing pains on your Halloween. I'll have the spooky details in your forecast next.